What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Red Cat Live. That's right, the one episode where I talk anything I can. RC and RC Lowrider, RC Basher, RC Crawler, just anything Red Cat related. So if you're new to the show, welcome. If you've been here before, man, we appreciate all of your support. Uh, we got a great show lined up for you guys here today. We got uh, none other than Beanches Lowriders representing. San Jose, California, if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, you better ask somebody, because I'm telling you the best, most coolest, amazing content when it comes to lowriders is being just lowriders. So, without further ado, let's welcome big homie Rick to the, for his first time ever on Red Cat Live. Rick, what's going on, bro? They can see your face, brother man. How are you today? Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to chop it up with us. Oh, I'm doing quite well today. You know, I'm just trying to get in the rhythm, staying busy. Um, been looking forward to doing this all day, you know, taking care of things. Um, just, you know, like doing the lives and everything else like that. So Dude, it's an it, honor to have me on. It's, so thank a, you. it's always lit in the lives, right? I mean, it's kind of a fun environment. We were just talking off air a little bit about uh, what goes down in the, uh, in the TikTok game and the Instagram game, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But yeah. Um, for the folks that don't know you, man, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not giving you guys enough hype, like real talk, 127,000 followers and growing one of the biggest, best lowrider content pages in all of YouTube. And that's you being just lowriders, man. I got to ask, how did it start, bro? How did you get into this? Well, I mean, it's the, the long story in the most positive aspect is, is that I just wanted to, uh, when I first started really doing video, and this is before YouTube was Google and um, was just trying to bring attention to the lowrider community. People were saying it was dying out at the time. And I started putting videos out and uh, early on, I just went to a lot of events and started taking pictures and videos and putting them on YouTube. And then um, a, a local magazine, got, you know, grabbed their attention and I did, I did stuff with them for about seven years. And then I decided I want to go solo. So I, 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 I you know, I, I researched, I, I could have find, I just had to find a catchy name and I came up with which is low rider. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like people, they say, how'd you fit, find that out? Well, there was a, there's a, a taqueria, pinches tacos. No shit. <laughs> no so, way. So, so it's, it's, so there was, um, Oh, I'm trying to think. It was way before Instagram. It was the little short videos. The, oh, the, uh, Vine, right? Vine. Vine? It was yeah. a Vine video. Wow. So it was a Vine video. <laughs> and, and it was this guy in, in the, in the he had his friends, and they're like, oh, pinches tacos, little tacos. And the Mexican guy in the back, he's like, it's it's Evan tacos. I don't want to say that word on here. But <laughs> right, right. yeah, that's what he's like. That's what it means. And then so I kind of ran with it, and I ran it through a couple people that I knew. And I kind of just like research a little bit and then it, it worked you know it's catchy and um since then i just been on this you know I, I go to all the events i can i travel as much as i can i get footage as much footage as i can i try to get as much of everything in the in a video um it's a little fast paced i don't do documentary it's more real action right you know i try to keep it uh quick right. i want you to i want you to you know miss being there right one thing, dude, and I got to say, like, I've been to, wow, seven shows in the last calendar year, and mm. I bumped into you at least three times, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, to me, that's quite a bit, you know, especially, you know, when it's all over the place, but you, I agree, there's something about the way you film your videos, and I'm telling you right now, guys, if you guys aren't going over to YouTube right now and following my boy, there's something wrong, like, you got to go over there and give him some love, I'm telling you, it's dope content, because... It's not, like you said, it's not the cinematography so mm. much as it's the experience of being there. And you capture that, right? From models being photographed to the hop-off to, you know, uh, all the, the dudes from Street ENT, you know, hosting, you know, their stuff to even us, you know, driving yeah. around. Like, you and I bumped into each other, I think, last year when I had one of my low lows. And you're like, bro, can I? And I was like, yeah, dude, yeah. game, you know? And, and that was that was the most, like iconic part to me that your videos are easy to watch you know? yeah and that's the goal i think you know and, and that's and that's it with anything i think that you know where even with your guys is the the like the rcs and everything the video everybody's doing the content that everybody's doing it's just it's coming non-stop 
So you have to be, you have to be nonstop. You have to be right there in the, in the midst of the action. Cause that's what everybody's loving about everything. And, and you see now, now there's like, there's this whole, everything in focused on these RCs, these low rider versions of, of, you know, this product. And all I'm seeing, like I, I made a video that's funny because I wanted to say this. So I made a two videos on my YouTube channel with the RC, the, the Monte Carlo. Yeah. And somebody goes another toy video man i thought this was a lowrider like oh, YouTube. and i'm right. like it is yeah you know what i mean like they want me to promote for them right that's what i'm doing it, you know it's off season too but it's it, there's always somebody wants to uh criticize dude hey i'm not i'm not gonna lie man there's haters everywhere but if you don't get haters oh, yeah. like i always say you ain't doing it right right exactly. uh, we got eric sarstano wants to say what's up to you man we got uh, eric by the uh, mr rc patina guy says what's up he's also representing that uh san jose lifestyle as well nice, nice. uh jamie rodriguez it says hola yoshi rivera says what's good jeff ramos is in the house and he also just wants to say hi so you know um one thing that that speaking on that tone and we'll, we'll yes. bring it back to it because you know when it comes to the lowrider scene and i want to just remove rc from it for just one second yeah because i want to circle back around as to how we tie those together mm -hmm. and one of the things that that i get is you know especially from where i'm sitting is we're releasing a toy in that fashion are we culturally appropriating or are we accentuating the culture now you've grown up in the culture you have a lot of years inside of it you've seen where it was in the early 90s with all the lowrider shows all over the placement it was the spot to be at if there yeah. was a lowrider show it wasn't just a one-day thing it was a full weekend of shenanigans oh, yeah. i remember you know a lowrider show would come into town and we'd take over the oakland coliseum you know, and there would be stuff happening Friday night, Saturday, all day long, different hop offs, different events. Sunday's a main day. And then after that is the cruise on East 14th, right? International Boulevard. And that was like the realms, right? And, and the culture was so vibrant and alive and electric. Um, what, what do you see with it now compared to what we saw mid late 90s going into the 2000s and now the 2020s? Well, the thing in the lowrider culture, and I was just trying to share the video over here on my other computer, but the, the thing is that it was spontaneous, that, that you didn't have to put out a flyer. You, you, I mean, back then, when we, like, I, I came up in the cruising, you know, just the same. It's like, in San Jose, cruising. It was cruising every weekend, every yeah. weekend. And, you know, you didn't have, I mean, there might have been specific cruises, Boulevard Nights, maybe, Cinco de Mayo was a no-brainer. Right. But, 16th of but, September, right? Yeah, 16th of September. But throughout the, the year, back in, in the day, you know, mid-90s, late-90s, cruising was every day. Week, I mean, every weekend. Yeah. And Friday, Saturday, you could cruise, and then you cruise during the day well, on Sunday. Especially for, you, you grew up in San Jose, right? I mean, it yeah. was a takeover doing Guadalupe, mm -hmm. right? I remember yeah. every Friday night. You no matter what car you got, you down there, you're cruising it. Even if it was your mama's Accord, four door, exactly. <laughs> See, that stock speakers nowadays. You know, since they have to, you know, don't get me wrong. I still like that they do the cruising and it's more organized, but yeah, it's manufactured. Yeah, and back then, cruising was not just lowriders. Cruising was just a scene. Period. Like you went out there in any type of car, hot rod. The the, the girls went you know, 10 deep in a, in a Honda Ford or Civic, you know yep. what I mean? And then you run into people and go, where are you from? So I'm, I'm from San Jose. So I run people Stockton, Fresno, right. um, you know, they Salinas. come in from Modesto, yeah. uh, Oakland, <laughs> Redwood city. And then you go, well, what are you going to do tonight? Well, we're going to go home after, but we, we cruised all night long till like three in the morning yeah. and they drove home and then yeah. they came back the next day to do it again. Dude. And that, that was the life though, bro. I remember being in, in high school and there was no better feeling than, I was I was really big into the the cruising scene. I had a seventy two Cutlass yeah. back in the day growing up, and that was my first car. So the first thing we had to do when I got that car was, yeah, we're going to San Ho, we're cruising. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. the thing to do. And uh, you know, once that car got jacked, you know, I got into racing Hondas. Where did I end up going? Still, you guessed it, San Jose Milpitas. Yeah, all exactly. the you know the 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 street racing scene. You know what I mean? It, yeah, there was a street racing spot in South San Jose by the light rail station. Yes. Yeah, yes. I never went to those, but I can hear them all night long yep. from my house. Yep, I live by Oak Grove. Yep, yep. yep. And that was past Santa Teresa Boulevard. You can hear the races at night. Oh, dude, and it would be nuts, man. They'd be going, you know, all night long, and then you know things change, and sometimes people get hurt, and you know, cops yeah, gotta look at it a little. All bit that stuff changes, you but know? you, but you know what? 
the, now even even I'll go back to the RC stuff. I just seen a video, okay, and it was two red cats like hopping, and then they had the RC little uh, racers doing um, drifting. Drifting. Yeah, was that George's? Was that George's video? Like, it's, it just it was just a recent video. Right, right. It, my boy Eric, official black turtle, had one just like that too. Yeah, dude. It, it's a trip to see the growth of the hobby like that. You know what I'm saying? But, We're, but go ahead. But sorry. But it's bringing, but it, well, my, my point with it is it bringing all that together though. Yes. It's just, the RC culture is still bringing back all those different types of car, like right. enthusiasm, even if it's a toy. Right. They're bringing it and they're molding it together. Well, so, and, and this is kind of where I want to tie the, the two things together. And, and yeah. my question, and I might be answering my own question, but I guess I just really want your, your opinion and your side of it. Which is like, look, growing up, it was it was a way of passage to start a car. You know, you yeah. started at an early age. You get involved with your family, father, son, uncles, tios, padrinos, you know, aunties, everyone. It was uh, it was the culture of a lifestyle yeah. of an expectancy. You weren't going to have a, a showpiece right out of the gate, but you're 39 years old down the line and your car is now show worthy, you know, for some, yeah. you know. Um, have you seen a lot of that? kind of go stagnant in, in, in some years. And is there for the children to get the children involved in the hobby? It, well, for me, it was the low rider bikes. That was the gateway for them earlier on. Absolutely. So, I mean, even the, the old school low rider models, my younger cousin, I remember he building a hopper, but the, the thing was, is I, I remember just opening up pictures, my family pictures yeah. and seeing the Impalas and stuff that my uncles had. Yeah. And then my grandmother, she had uh, her first car ever she bought off the, the lot was a 77 Impala. Ooh, nice. And then they had that long glass window. It was yeah. like basically that's, it was the um, box Chevy, but had that, that fast bag window. Right, right. And it had almost like the little cutouts, like a right by yeah. the rear window, right? Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, it was, it, was, it just, the, the whole glass was all slanted. Yep. But, but um I turned 18 and my, and my family's like, well, I was going to, you know, what do you want for your 18th birthday? And my grandmother's car just sat in the front. It was, it was down for three or four years. It didn't run or anything. And I said, I want the car. <laughs> I want the Impala. And then my grandma was like, okay, but you got to fix it. Right. So up until right before my, you know, my 18th birthday, I pretty much started working on it and I had to get it running myself. Right. And I did, I did it all. Well, obviously I've been mentored through the years. I've been, I, I think I tell people, I changed my first tire when I was six. You know, I have my uncles all worked on cars. And so I was there helping with tools under the cars, changing things, you know, stuff like that. I helped my, at 16, I used to help my uncle uh, replace engines and stuff like that in his front yard because he was doing it. You know, someone paid him to do it. Yeah. So I had that mechanical, you know, I'm not the greatest mechanic in the world, but I have pulled the whole engine out of my cut list and, and replaced everything all myself. Right. I had, you know, I had to do it all by myself, but you know, it, it's, it's a tradition. that's not always passed down because all these cars now are computerized and you're a technician, not a mechanic anymore. And, but I do see a lot of younger guys getting involved and they're picking up some of these older cars and they're fiddling and they're learning. And it's, it's, it's something like people ask me like, why don't you get a low rider? Right. I said, I'm waiting for my son to get older because I want to build one and teach him how to work on it and then build up from that. Yeah. You know I mean, so, and, 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 and that's what I'm getting at, you know, for like as a gateway drug to keep the kids involved, <laughs> you know, as I was growing up, I felt like I was kind of at the end of the, the generation where kids were no longer really as interested in building like we've seen in, in previous years. And people were really big into the, you know, low rider bicycle scene. I remember when low rider magazine dropped the um Loretta bicycle mag and yeah. that was big and we got to see models and we got to see um you know bikes of all realms being built and so to me it's like okay now we're looking it's 2022 let's face it man like to find a 64 lolo for under that isn't a wreck and under <laughs> you know an astronomical large amount of money it's harder to do so you know i find so much encouragement and so much satisfaction when I go to lowrider shows and now I'm seeing the red cat lowriders going around and kids are using that. They're not on their phones. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. They're not on a tablet. They're enjoying their cars and they're all about it, man. And, and seeing that gives me hope that the culture is well and alive and, and we're not done here. We're, we're, we're still pushing. 
Yeah. And then for anybody to think that, you know, you're, what was the, I can't even say the word right. Appropriate. Oh, oh. Culture appropriation. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I had to look so, it up. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so I get all like all that stuff, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's what needs to be to stimulate the culture. Right. Right. So we can all, we can all agree that during the pandemic, it, what it did was it actually multiplied low riding in the sense is it, yes, the shows went away for a while, but the cruising and it brought back people to the streets and right. you have to start there. There's more, there's clean low riders you'll never see in a show right. that are out there cruising on the street and, and, and they're built that way. And let's face it, there's a lot of politics, which you won't get into, that yeah, no. can make or break whether or not you want to take a car to a show, right? Absolutely. Um, from clubs to the, the venue to the promoters to who you're dealing with. Um, but I, I got to drop this for you really quick. Erica Seno says, wait, what? My man is from San Ho? Yo, Shark City, bet. <laughs> uh, oh. Jamie Rodriguez says, cruising El Camino in San Jose in the 90s. That was the life. Um, what else we got? Uh, someone says Jesse Macias says, "Man, I started at the age of ten, and I'm proudly pushing fifty three and still in the scene." So, uh, yeah. man, that's that's love, man. You know, and 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 I I like, you know, where we're going as Red Cat with with this scene, and you know, I know you've seen more of us attend more and more shows, yeah. and I've seen more of our stuff kind of come up on, on your feeds as well as we've, as we've grown in that fashion, and I think one thing my takeaway is, A, it gives people more options to build, right? Absolutely. Um, B, hopefully it keeps the kids involved and get, keeps them off the street, um, and it keeps them close, maybe even sparking and igniting that fire within them to then potentially get them started on their journey to build something, you know? Yeah, um, for for you and where you stand in, in all the content, all the shows you go to, you know, there, there's got to be something, some drive that pushes you to want to wake up at 5 a.m., bro, fully charged up, batteries on all your cameras. Yeah. Like, what is it, brother, man? What is it that gets you going? What motivates you to keep this scene going and the culture alive? Because ultimately, one low riding in itself is probably been one of the most diverse, culturally um, accepting uh, forms of automotive enthusiasm than any other one. I've never, I have literally, and, I, and it's changing, but I've literally seen hot rod flyers years, you know, within the years ago that said no low riders. Yeah, dude. I remember, so the yeah. Low riders. They don't do that. Yeah. Low riders don't do that. If you really, really think about it, low riding in itself, you could be any, any race, any background. And if you have spokes in your car, you're a low rider. If you, if you have an old school, you're a low, if you want to come to our shows, you're a low rider. Right. They are welcoming a uh, form of, of automotive community that I've ever seen. Because at the end of the day, the only thing we ask is, is you're not doing burnouts and donuts and turning it into a sideshow. Exactly. Because that ruins it, period. Yeah, don't and, be, and don't people be... don't understand the hoppers, but they're not that crazy when you really think about it. We just crowd around them. Right, right. And, you know, and let's face it, I think uh, for me, that that's always been a highlight of any show I go to is mm -hmm. the hop-off. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't understand is a lot of guys that do the hop-off, do they're going in with the intention to or not intention, but the reality that something might break and something yeah. might get damaged. And when you're talking about a car that's got a ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar paint job, and you know, mm. what I mean, like he put a lot of thought into that, you know. And, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, one, one of my takeaways, you know, from that is I love seeing just the growth, right? Yeah, and not just not just the growth, but just the the way we elevate each other, right? I mean, absolutely. I show up early to an event. I see you, you're around taking pictures of cars, but what I see most, what stands out to me is so many car clubs, they're all working together as a team, setting up each individual car. Sometimes, you know, you got a different car club next to you, and what are they doing, man? They're not looking at each other like, hey, who are you, who are you? Do they're like, hey, do you need help? You need, oh, I got extra fi microfibers. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that. The that camaraderie. camaraderie. Exactly, exactly. Um, and that's what I love seeing, man. It, it, it truly is a blessing to see that it, that aspect of it has alive and well, you know? Yeah. That, I think at the end of the day, that's the whole thing. Like to me, there's some, there's some competition, but there's a lot of respect and, and, and people don't, 
you know, people always question why this and why that. Well, you know right. what? That's fine. Why would people want to build a hot rod? You know what I mean? Like, why right. do people want to build, you know, the Euro tuner or they want to spend money on a, on a exotic sports car? It's, it's, you know, it's not a midlife crisis. It's, it's that, that we can afford it now when yeah. we're older and mature. You got to be careful with the whole Euro thing. It sparked a whole conversation in the page. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but no, hey, on the real, man, uh, all you guys that are chiming in and listening and commenting, I appreciate the love. Um, if you have any questions for Rick as well, man, drop them to me so I can ask them and we can get them answered here live. Uh, once again, if you're just chiming in, you're just jumping in, we got none other than Beaches Lowriders uh, from uh, YouTube pushing 127,000 followers and growing. In my opinion, one of my favorite uh, RC Lowrider content pages on YouTube, period. Um, if you don't follow them, head on over there, check him out. He's on Instagram. He's on fa- he got a Facebook page, too, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Page. He got a website page, beancheslowriders.com. Um, are you on TikTok, too? I have a TikTok, but it's more personal. But okay. I do have everything repping the Pinches Lowriders brand. But it, it's kind of like... so. As long as it's not personal like me, like I'm not watching you eating tacos and eating you, you know nah, what I'm saying, it's, talking it's about my your personal feelings. opinion. Okay. <laughs> if you do want to talk tacos and personal opinions, check mine out. It's King there underscore you know. Big O. I'm all about tacos and emotions. Let's do it. Um, but, you know, and nonetheless, guys, uh, I got we got guys, are, they're loving it, man. Um, uh, I'm not going to ask that question, Eric. You're a fool. Eric says, how does it feel to be in the presence of everyone's auntie's favorite TikToker? See, I told you, bro. See, there <laughs> See? It is. So, um, you can't hate, you know what I mean? Hey, you know what I'm saying? Plenty of aunties out there. Congratulate the player. Not, you know, don't hate the game. Hate the, well, no. <laughs> you don't know hate the I mean? player. Don't hate, hate the, the player. Game. Hate the game, you know? Uh, but, man, you know, nonetheless, you know, I, I appreciate what you do. I feel, mm-hmm. and I don't know if anyone's taking the time to tell you this, um, that, what you're doing is helping maintain and keep this amazing culture alive. Um, And I feel that you're doing it all for the right reasons. You want to do more with your kid and enjoy the hobby. I know that I I got to meet your son. um, Mm -hmm. I want to say Long Beach. Beach. He had the uh, purple Monte Carlo. He was messing around with it, hopping it. I showed him the uh, black training day car that I brought. That was awesome. You know what I'm saying? It it, it definitely was... uh, Really cool. And what's funny is I didn't even know that he was there playing with the car. Georgia actually came and grabbed me and was uh-huh. like, yo, check this out, you know? So then I had to go and take some pictures of it as well, you know? Uh, yeah. But it, it was fun, man. And and that's what I'm getting at, you know? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep elevating it to the highest potential. And, and that's what we need, you know? Yeah. Um, exactly. Where do you see Pinches Lowriders going next? Like, what is what is your main goal in the long term with beaches in the, in the long term just more content um i want to bring more content more action more um you know go to more places so in may i'm traveling almost every weekend i'll be in uh salt lake city utah on uh, the weekend of the 6th of may i'll be in portland oregon the following weekend nice i'll be in bakersfield california the weekend the 22nd and then Memorial Day weekend, I'm going to be in Seattle, Washington, Dude. and I'm going to be there just to cover events. Bro, the Seattle, the, the Seattle, Florida. Washington one. We got to talk about that for a second, because I want to say I talked to was it Saint? Yeah, Saint Low or Saint Low. Um, it was Saint Low, and he was telling me that man, they're tr- they're really trying their hardest to get um, just a lowrider scene to grow more in Portland. And yeah. he's like, dude, I don't even care if you don't have a low rider, we're putting you in the show. If it could be a bug, it could be, you know, a civic, you know, JDM mm-hmm. style. And I love that because it's that mentality that it's like, dude, no, we're all inclusive, you know? Yeah. And that's what I went, that's what I was just talking about. How low rider community is welcoming to all types of vehicles because it's appreciation of a vehicle. It's a lifestyle more than it is anything. And originally low riders were not even the cars. They were the people. Nice. Nice. That's, that was the, the actual reference. That's dope, dude. Hey, uh, yeah. I got to answer this question. Tony, yes. Rick's son out hopped me with the money, man. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I lost. I had to buy, I didn't, I had to buy the kid tacos and man, it was, <laughs> but I, Hey, I pay my debts. A oh, Ramirez always pays his debts. Just want to say that. Um, taught him how to dance it. I taught him. Right. Right. Hey, <laughs> dad, dad taught him well, dad taught him well, man. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Eric wants to know, uh, is there a place to get any kind of Pinches Lowriders merch by chance? Um, there is. If you just Google Pinches Lowriders, there's going to be, uh, it's, it was Teespring. Usually it's underneath my YouTube 
and it's just uh, digital print stuff right now. Um, so basically, that's where to find it right there. If you just Google it, um, and uh, it'll be it'll be in there like within like five uh, listings. It should be there. No, nice. or, or look on the YouTube channel, and there's some merch. Uh, they should be linked under every video. There you go. There you guys go. Oh, for me, so sometimes people don't see it, but that's so, what's at. And what kind of merch can they expect to find when they do check that uh, link? T-shirts, tank tops. You know, still got masks if we're still using those. I don't know, but Eric, there's you know, mainly just some stuff. Some stuff for women shirts and stuff right. like that. Eric wants to know because he really likes crop tops. Do you have crop tops? <laughs> <laughs> got no crop tops. You got to edit yourself. <laughs> Man, that means I'm about to make my own. I mean, uh, he has to make his own. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> um, let me see here. <laughs> Uh, Tony wants to know what's up with my cooled outfit weather. Well, I don't know if you know this or not, Tony. It, we're not on the coast. Uh, the weather here is just as bipolar. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it's a cold day, cool day out here. So, and I had a rep, man. I had a rep. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I had to get left to the OGs, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Seattle should be interesting. I'm, I'm, I've never been out there. So, um, you know, um, Max shot it. Also, one of the photographers out there. He's the one who invited me out uh, to that event, and we kind of put it together so I could be there. So it's kind of cool because this year, actually, I've been put on more flyers. People have been asking me to come out, um, made arrangements for me to come cover events. So it's been pretty cool that I'm at the point now where a lot of stuff I do on my own, but then now I'm getting invited, and now some of them are getting comp too, so where I don't have to pay out of pocket. Dude, that's awesome. So. You get to create content. You're not out of pocket. It's no longer stressing you out, right? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming you have, do you take time off of work to go to these events. So, I used to have a desk job, and I had great PTO and stuff. So a lot of times, I just take my PTO on Fridays, and I fly out or or Monday and come back. So I try to make arrangements like so I don't miss miss time. Like I'll either leave in the evening, and then I come back Sunday. Um, excuse me, Monday morning usually when I have to fly back, and then I just I just Actually, I'm, I've always been like make my work kind of revolve around this because this is my 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 passion. Sure. So um, I've always found a way to get it done where it doesn't interfere. Sure. So, so I'm assuming you also you do your own editing, obviously, when you get it back home or even on the plane, mm-hmm. maybe I'm assuming, um, you know, if for all the folks out here that are eager to start a channel and invest in themselves and, and try to blow up, right? Take a stab mm-hmm. at the social media growth. Um, is there any kind of, um, I guess, advice you can give these folks? So one of the biggest things people will always ask me, because like I say, like I make so much money on YouTube and I don't make a lot. I don't, I average, maybe if I'm really, really lucky, like 800 a month. Okay. That's it. Right. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure if you're like me, you're like, I'm not counting on it. It's yeah, it's it, not, I'm not right. counting on it, but it, it, it pays for me to do what I do. But the, the biggest thing is just to make content, put up content. You know, um, the consistency is what's going to build your channel, period. So over anything, gimmicks, over whatever, just consistent video. And my everything grows in my channel when I have back-to-back shows or I have a show every weekend, I'm putting on videos every week. It's consistently giving growth to my YouTube channel. Love it. So, so for all that, and then use all your social media. Some people, I understand, I, I kind of talk a lot of trash because people are not always allowed to have social media. Right. But you, but if you really are into this kind of a, a content, you have to utilize every form, one way or the other. Because there's, it, it, and, and the biggest thing I could tell you is Facebook brings me my most views when it comes down to my YouTube videos. Interesting. So resharing them on Facebook gets them out exactly. to the masses more, right? Mm-hmm. People share and reshare and that works yeah. for you dude that's awesome bro yeah. i love that man that that so that you guys go man stay consistent be persistent let's just start rapping bro um <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah invest you know, in yourself don't be afraid yeah. to you know if you earn a little bit of money buy use it for the cameras use so it, i mean and, and let me ask you another question i mean like you see me i know you see me out and about and yeah. I, I hardly ever bring a dslr up i'm always yeah. with my phone because mm. Let's face it, with what we're doing on the phone, I can still get 4K. I can't even display to the masses in 4K, yeah. but I can grab it, you know. Um, and I always tell people, you know, I'm really big into taking pictures. I'm really big yeah. in photography, I'm trying to learn more. I, I've watched a lot of videos, and my photography over the years has, has definitely gotten, in my opinion, better and better. Um, 
and I, I take pride in taking good photographs. And one thing that when people come to me and they ask me like, yo, dude, like, how do you do X, Y, and Z? Or, you know, how do you take that picture? And I always tell people like, dude, dude get low. I don't yeah. care if it's a real car or not. Get low, you mm-hmm. know. Um, obviously, me, if you, <laughs> I'm a 280-pound dude, and I'll be laying on the ground for an RC car. There's pictures out there of me doing so. Um, yeah. I'll be Billy Goating off a rock, taking a picture of a rock crawler. Uh, but obviously, you're not getting that low for a lowrider. But you, you want to find the lines, right? And, and, yeah. And you do the same. Is there any advice you can give in that fashion? Well, I have the cameras I all use, and they're my Canon cameras, but they all have the swivel screen. So I don't necessarily lay down on the ground, but I can put my camera to the floor and I have a, a screen that swivels. Right. And so I think that the dramatic photo for the lowriders is when they're laid out because from the ground up, it's that perspective, low rider, low right. rider, you know, it works. And, I, and it, but it works for almost any car, to be honest right. with you. So I think that it just, it, you're right. The getting low, but just taking the picture yeah. really, how do you get the picture? Take it. Yes. You know, I, I've actually even gotten to a point where I have a file on my phone, on my notepad. Mm. And when I'm using my DSLR, because I'm, I'm playing with aperture, light, white light balance and all those mm. things. I literally would take a picture of my settings mm. for that moment of time. And yeah. I'll see what didn't work, you know, and I'll say, okay, if I change my, this, my FSO, bring it back a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, change my aperture, we'll change the, the white light balance, or right, boom, boom, and I can make better and better pictures. So now, what are you I, editing with? Oh, uh, dude, I, I do raw. Oh, no, but what are you editing on a computer? None. I think Lightroom, Nothing. get Lightroom. Yeah, Lightroom. So, so Lightroom you know, works great. Yeah. Yeah, Lightroom, but, but what you want to do is that will also tell you all your settings in that picture. Oh, nice. I did not but know you that. You don't have to do that. Dude, so I, I, I do it. I do everything yeah. in that. I'm I'm one of those geeks, bro. That just like I'll have I have a whole folder in my phone with maybe 300 pictures, settings, and time of the day that I did them all the yeah, notes. Because you know, nowadays you just take out your little yeah, you know. But like, your phone too, your your photos when you when you do your photos, if you go into info, it'll actually break down your exposure, everything. Oh, interesting. So Eric says yeah, he, if you're shooting in raw, you you'll get all the information you need. And then you can go from there too. Oh, I love it, dude. I love it. A lot of my, a lot of my editing I do right from my phone itself. Uh, mm. Definitely take a look at that. Uh, someone also recommended on here uh, that uh, Eric likes to use uh, children's edition of Microsoft Paint because he still works with crayons. So <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, we, I, I think we all, st- I started we're, there. We're an equal opportunist here, guys. <laughs> okay, we give love to everyone. Eric, good job. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, let me see here. All right. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions here really quick. Uh, yeah. So, you know, in, in, I love using DSLRs too, you know, and I know you, that's kind of your, your realm quite a bit. You use that for a lot of your filming, if I remember Absolutely. correctly. Yeah, I do. So I do a lot of handheld. I, I bought all the like gimbals. I actually use the majority of what I use is my GoPro with the Karma Grip, which is, it's a GoPro 5 and the Karma Grip. They don't make no more because it was part of their drone that didn't work. It didn't wasn't successful. But the Karma Grip, I love it. A lot of people I've know people that are used to bigger rigs and they don't like it. But what I like is the, that I can move freely. Like I uh, I'm trying to get as much of the show as possible sometimes, and that's my go to for that to get the bulk video. And then after, so say like in the beginning of the show, I want to get bulk. So I'm walking every aisle with the GoPro Karma Grip until that battery is gone. Oh, wow. Then I get my DSLR and then I start using that when I take pictures or I have an assistant. So sometimes I'll have him recording while I'm doing photo shoots with the models. Mira, lo, you got an assistant. Mira, shoot, bro. Big time, yeah, well, he's, Rick. He's my best friend and he's my tag it. along. So I make, I told him he has to do something useful if he wants to go with me everywhere. <laughs> Hold on. Boss, boss, if you're watching, I need an assistant. Can I have an yeah. assistant, please? That, I need one. That'd be awesome. Dude, yeah, that, he's my, I call, I, I said his, his title is uh, uh, Video Assistant One. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, do that. But you know what, dude? Working as a team, a teamwork makes a dream work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so exactly. you, you got you to make that happen, man. Um, how about once you get your videos done, do you stockpile them all? Do you upload them all at once and dump them all? Or do you space them out? Um, 
space them out for content um, because honestly, I've noticed if I break a video, say I get a lot of footage at a big show and mm -hmm. I have like part one and two, um, part two will get more views and I have no reason and I have no idea why, but it does. And in the standings of if I load them too quick together, I don't like, so I have like a minimal, like I'll say this video needs to have 2000 views before I release the next video. And so I space it out that way because of the algorithm with YouTube sure. and such. So it, it, it's not back to back depending on what it is. Have you noticed the algorithm with YouTube? Cause you've been doing YouTube videos for a few mm. years, rock solid, right? With mm. Peaches Low Riders before you, yeah. I know you're doing stuff before as well, but have you noticed any algorithm differences when you compare it to like Instagram or TikTok or Facebook? Is it its own proprietary you know, algorithm you feel? Well, it is because, so the biggest thing people say is, how come you don't put music? They complain. They want to oh, hear music. Yeah. They, and we all know it's copywritten. So let's just, we won't, that's a whole different subject. Mm -hmm. But so here's the thing. At the end of the day, if they can't make money off the video, they don't throw it out into the universe for people to find it. So if you realize that you stay within the parameters so that you can get monetized that they will actually make sure other people see it so that's basically so, so playing the game following the rules mm -hmm. is what's going to get you pushed farther yeah and then and then like i said so my best video um is very busy there's people always commenting and saying this that or whatever and that's the the one with the most views and everything like that in the millions but it's because there's constant people talking to each other about each other, stuff like that, positive, negative, maybe whatever, but it's, it's the consistency and that's what they want to see is the traffic. So that follows with Instagram and, and, and also follows with Facebook. The, what I found in the algorithms is if you have a busy um, page or you have like a picture with people talking on it and stuff, it gets put out more through their finding to be able to, so they make it easier for people to find it basically yeah. so because they're benefiting from it right so at the end of the day yes you benefit from it absolutely but if instagram itself or facebook itself or youtube itself can benefit from it they also help people find it nice so you know we're going to get to a, a part of the sector which i'm going to i'm going to start doing this with a lot of people that do mm. these shows with us especially when it comes to low rider content if you could pick one car to have made into a lowrider in RC scale size, what would it be? Hmm. Putting you on the I, spot. I kind of gave, well, 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 I'm thinking, well, my dream lowrider was a 61 Impala Super Sport convertible. Cool. But, but I think with a cool car, you know what? A I'll go away Prius? from lowrider. Toyota no, no. Prius? Yes. No. No, I'm just hey, at least it's all electric. But no. <laughs> You know, honestly, what would be a really cool car that I think, and it's a movie car, though. The car from Cobra. Cobra. Oh, dude, the sled. The Mercury. The Mercury. Yes. That yeah. Mercury sled. I had a and car had, similar. I had, and had uh, the, 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 the smoothies on the wheels. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Bro, if you guys don't know, man, that is. That's Such dating myself, a, but still. No, dude, that was one of my favorite movies, bro. Especially when that car was getting airborne on every jump so they were running. Oh, yeah, you had, you had nitrous right? in it and turbo. Yeah, dude, it. yeah. Um, dude, that's a dope car. Uh, so a sled would be something you'd like to see. I think I think it would look cool. I, I, I think um, as like a movie car. I mean, because I think, honestly, the Monte Carlo, the first thing I said was you should have just made it black in the beginning. It's black now. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it just, it oh, was. I know. Right there, boom! You know, everybody yep. said the same thing. It's the car from Training Day. Yeah, you know? yep. and then, and and I'm sure that for the owner, when when choosing that, I, I'm sure that had some kind of an influence as well. Yeah, uh, we know we wanted to do a G body, and in fact, mm -hmm. for a lot of you folks, a little history lesson is the actual Monte Carlo was the initial car. It was what oh, was wow. going to be dropped, and uh, we started working on the '64, making it uh, a hopper and. and they felt the team engineering team, the owner felt like, you know what? Let's put the original uh, back burner and let's yeah. focus all of our 
you know, time and effort and money into the 64 because that well, is sense. the most iconic in their eyes at that time. And, you know, we have a couple of drops coming out this year and we're excited about. And for you, I got to ask you, you've seen the 64, you've seen mm-hmm. where it started, you've seen now we're at the Monty. What was your initial thought when you first started hearing and seeing these things pop up? Oh, I thought it was genius. Don't, don't, I mean, honestly, I, I was like, and, and then I, I, I looked at it and don't get me wrong. The price was, I was like, dude, but I was, I was willing to pay it for my son. And I asked him if he wanted it yeah. and I told him, well, it's going to cost you this much money. And he's like, oh, that's a lot, dad. I'm like, yeah, but, and then, so what it was is I actually, um, I, I invested in a video game system for him, but at the end of the day, he uses his money here and he loves it. Dude, I, and let me tell you, he smiles too. He's all into it, bro. Like, yeah. I love it. Um, he, he got me all like excited, like, I'm going to go get my car. I'm going to go play with my car. You know, yeah. like, I was walking by, taking pictures. And like I said, Georgia pulls me, he's like, hey, check it out. And I go over and I'm like, I'm like running like a little gordito, bro, you know, yeah. after the paletero man, you know, trying to go get my car so I can bring it around, you know, and, and show him. But that that's awesome. And, again, I love how it bridges a, a gap in a way to, yeah. you know, father-son time, you know. And, and it, for me, the hobby, the RC hobby, is one that's monumental in a way that it allows me to enjoy something with my kids, mm. right, and get them involved in something, you know. And speaking of, bro, I am headed – to bakersfield this weekend i'm picking up a 65 c10 step side oh nice uh, so i'm 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 trying to get in the game <laughs> if you know what i'm saying I'm trying yeah. to I'm trying to trying to do something so um again yeah like, my cousin's dad had a 72 step side oh I, I and a, it was in lowrider magazine several oh. times way back in the 70s and he and he he was had one of the most iconic lowrider trucks out here Dude. and it was really simple it was, just, it was black but badass period that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I'm a big truck fan, especially on the step sides. And my, my dad had one growing up, 78, uh, root beer brown, slammed on the ground with an Enkies, golden and polished wheels, you know. Yeah. And it was it was the look, you know. And so, I don't know, I, I want to do, do a bagged truck. Well, it's nice that everybody's using those bodies, too, now. And they're building, yeah. they're building low rider, uh, low yeah. rider trucks. Yeah, yeah. The, I just seen an El Camino. So, I don't know where they got that, but yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know... It, it, you again. You we got your first take on it on the the sixty four when you saw it. What was your initial thought when the money started circling around for you? Oh well, I think it was great. I I, I look at it and I go, oh, I love that body style. Yeah. I mean, the the body style, the fenders, the the that's just it's iconic beyond the movie, you know, and everything. It's just it's always been one of the favorites. I had a seventy five Monte Carlo. Um, I'm actually. If I buy another Monte Carlo ever again, it'll probably be a 74. Right. And those are, favorite years. those are the boats, right? Yeah. They're the big boats. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the funniest story is I got a seven, I got the 75 and I, when I bought it, when I picked it up, I had to put gas in it. I had to make a U-turn and I never driven a car that big before. When I made my U-turn, I stayed in one place, the whole car turned, but it felt like I didn't move at all. Right. <laughs> That's how big the front end of it is. Yeah. <laughs> and you're in this cab way back and you turn, you're like this. I'm like, what the? It was the weirdest feeling ever, but it was the first time I ever made a turn in that car. And, uh, but yeah, it's uh, they're amazing cars and it was right. fast. I had a 350 with the 350 tranny in it. And it was, um, I, I, I say only on the freeway, I only lost a couple races that, you know, if I went Check real fast. Hey, and that was, uh, that race happened in Mexico guys. It was not in yeah. the U S just so you guys know. Many years ago. Right. Louis Alcala. Don't condone that. Right. <laughs> My homie Louis Alcala um, just commented, and I remember this truck. It was a uh, truck from Northern California called the Punch 84. It was the uh, pickup Yeah, I know truck. exactly where that, that, that truck is at. Right hey, there. see, he knows exactly where the truck's at, too. Um, <laughs> the guy still has it. It's still it's still there, and it's the, all one. The original owner still has it? Yes. Oh, dude, that's so awesome. That's <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, man. Well, you know. Guys, for all you guys that are just checking in now and, and kind of dropping in and, and kind of coming in and going, uh, we've had Peaches Lowriders on the show today. Uh, if you want to kind of get this interview, definitely start it from the beginning. Um, if you want to find Peaches Lowriders, any of his content, Rick, tell them where they can find you on all the avenues if you can, please. Okay. Well, we're uh, uh, Peaches Lowriders, one word, on YouTube, 
Instagram. We have the Pinchas Lowriders uh, like page on Facebook. I have a, I do have a Twitter. If you guys are into Twitter, I don't really use it too much, but I have that. And, and if anything else, just Google me, Pinchas, Pinchas Lowriders. And everything's there, the website.com. Um, I, I recommend going to the website if you're not a big person on uh, social media. Uh, go there and uh, sign up for email notifications. And then I put in all the new content from different shows that I, that I put in. And those uh, emails is to let you know I updated the website mostly. So stuff like that, anything like that. And then uh, also look forward, I'm bringing in out a new website, a new thing called Custom Vida. It's going to be my, um, my next thing for podcasting. And it's going to be mainly a podcast website. And the new website just went up this Monday. So check it out and Google that too as well. Got it. And that's Custom Vida, right? Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Custom Vida, it's going to be a podcast coming out soon, guys. So don't miss out on that. Uh, man, I look forward to that. I look forward to having something else to listen to on the way to work because it's always hard to find a good podcast, you know. And if you guys want more RC fun, check out the RC Hangout. They also got a podcast that talks RC stuff everywhere. and They have a library of, uh, of podcasts that they've recorded previously over the years. So check them out. Uh, man, much love, Rick. I appreciate your time. I know I took quite a bit of it today, and I, I appreciate all of your your knowledge that you were able to share with us and allow us to pick your brain in that fashion. And, and you've been amazing, bro. And I hope to just continue to see you grow. I, I wish you nothing but success uh, within the industry. And man, you're like all you guys out there. Keep an eye out. Check them out. Follow them on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Give him some love and make sure that, uh, that he knows that we're all supporting him. Look forward to it. And look forward to all the content coming in the next couple months. It'll be nonstop. Got it, man. All right, guys. Well, with that said, I appreciate all you guys. Today's a wrap. Uh, we'll get this uploaded into YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. You're the true MVPs. And uh, all you guys in the comments that are bashing me, or not bashing me, but making fun of me because of my taco life. Let's talk about it. I love you guys. Love, peace, chicken, grease. You guys stay safe. Keep the rubber side down, and I will see all of you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Peace.